might think they're experts on all things demonic, but sometimes stuff happens that even they can't explain. Today we have footage of an exorcism, something else that looks angelic in form only, and more. So let's get into it. It may come as a surprise that any case involving the Warrens would be included on a list like this. Yeah, that was sarcasm. We're all big fans of the famed demonologists around here. And what better way to start off a demon list than with some of the most well-known demon experts of all time? We don't talk about it often, but the case of Maurice Frenchy Theriot is difficult to dismiss as a hoax. Usually, psychological explanations for bizarre behavior, exaggerated reports, and a tendency to believe in the supernatural would kind of make you skeptical about a story like this one. But then, you'll see the shocking footage of the exorcism and change your mind. Frenchy, like many alleged demonic possession victims, had a traumatic upbringing. He suffered long hours working on his family farm, dealing with his father's attitude, which became more and more violent towards his son as he became older. Frenchy began to ask for help, calling upon anybody who would offer assistance, even unknowingly asking Satan to help him. It was during this time that he witnessed something horrific in the farm's barn that is never explained fully, but it's hinted at enough. After that particularly horrific incident, Frenchy discovered that he had acquired otherworldly powers. He eventually left the farm and floated around New England for years, and in the spring of 1985, the town noticed something unusual going on with him. Humid redness would randomly appear in his home and on his body. He had increased strength and found that hidden knowledge was suddenly revealed to him. He also had the ability to be in several places at once. And yes, that was the most disturbing power that he had. It was decided that his case was one of possession, and Bishop Robert McKenna was called in and agreed to perform an exorcism. But during said exorcism, things got crazy, and not in the usual snarling and body contorting fashion. The slow morph of Maurice's face in the video of his exorcism is extremely disturbing, and the footage is only recommended for a mature audience, by the way. Off screen, boil eruptions appeared on his skin, and even crosses appeared all over his body. But the clip that we have just oozes evil, and has convinced many skeptics that Frenchie was really possessed by a demon. Given that this case occurred in the mid-1980s, many years before the sophisticated CGI technology we have today, this footage might just be the creepiest unexplained event ever recorded. Sadly, seven years later, Theriot killed his wife and then killed himself. His sister denounced the possession as a sham, saying he faked the tears and the speaking Latin backwards, but Lorraine Warren was like, it was no fake. Ed added, like, if it was mental illness or a fake, why did tables rise off the floor? We put him in a hospital for six weeks and the doctors couldn't explain it. This next Facebook video is perplexing, if not frightening. When you see the footage taken on Vivian Gomez's security camera, you're gonna find yourself saying what the heck along with her. So in the video that we have, you can see a short, kinda jovial figure, a scrawny frame on weak legs, gallivanting along with no reservations. This thing looks like a cross between an elf, a goblin, an alien, and a lot of folks have made comparisons to Dobby, I think that's the character's name from the Harry Potter series. So Vivian awoke one Sunday morning in 2019 and checked her monitor for any activity pattern from the night before, because you gotta check your security cameras. And at first she saw a shadow falling across the front door near the camera that kind of got the figure, and moments later you saw the figure casually skipping around the driveway, doing what many spectators refer to as the chicken dance. The description included with the post states, so I woke up Sunday morning and saw this on my camera and I'm trying to figure out like what the heck. First I saw the shadow walking from my front door, then I saw this thing. Has anyone else seen this on their cameras? The other two cameras didn't pick it up for some reason. So the video, which has since been dubbed the Dobby video due to the figure's resemblance to the character that we mentioned earlier, has gone viral with over 180,000 shares and almost 16 million views on Facebook alone. According to an article in USA Today and several comments on the Facebook thread, some people suspect that the video might be doctored. Well, others say that maybe it was a puppet, but Gomez insists it's real. She's been quoted as saying, look, if anyone tested it or whatever they do, it would confirm it's not altered. Ghostly photos are pretty common on social media. Ditto for video. But then you look at Richard Christensen's undeniably unsettling media, and this was captured on January 1st, 2017 in Phoenix, Arizona. He's like, what the hell do you see in this for reals? Anybody? The post has since been deleted, but thank you Internet Archives. Well, he didn't take a guess at what he saw, the internet was all over it. His post prior to it being deleted had been shared like 90,000 times, had 10,000 comments. People were pretty active about this. It shows what appears to be either an evil angel or gargoyle strolling an empty street. And in the comments a lot of folks were like, is this good? Is this bad? Is it angel? Is it demon? Some folks thought it might have been proof of the elusive Mothman. A few rational voices tried to speak up. They were like, hey, maybe it's a palm tree. but. 
a lot of folks are like, no, this is something supernatural, possibly demonic. A video that has garnered over 2 million views has caught the attention of the mainstream media and paranormal skeptics. So in this next video, posted on YouTube by user Gamma Mori back in 2013, she was a man in a hoodie being attacked and dragged by a dark entity, possibly a ghost or a demon in a hallway security camera. The poster says, I love how people claim the video is fake right away just because they think that ghosts aren't real. Well, maybe the guy who was pushed down the video and dragged halfway down the hall didn't think ghosts were real until the encounter. Yes, we do have a couple of skeptics stepping forward being like, hmm. They're like, stop the video at exactly 49 seconds. You're going to see he's detaching something from his leg. I'm 100% sure of it. Also, this is why the apparition doesn't have any reflection. The way he starts down the hall looks like acting. Like, have you never walked dramatically down a hallway? Thankfully, other people agree with me. One commenter said, I have seen plenty of these shadow people. I had one right in front of me the other day when I got out of the bath. Never been so scared. So take that, doubters. And finally for today, a Hawaiian runner said she was left with literal goosebumps after unknowingly encountering an alleged demon during a grueling race in Hawaii, as seen in a spine-tingling video. She wrote in a blog post earlier this year saying, to this day, we still don't know what it was. An avid runner since high school, Kay Borlis, the art director and designer, specializes in ultra marathons, defined as any run longer than 26 miles. This particular incident allegedly occurred in January of 2019, while Kay was competing in the Hurt 100 mile race, which is a grueling 20 mile loop through Honolulu's Mocha trails that participants run five times. Now this race is especially brutal due to the numerous obstacles, including thick mud caked routes, numerous water crossings, cliffs, steep rocky inclines. The competition was going swimmingly, <laughs> pun intended, until Kay injured her foot during her second to last lap and had to pull out of the race, marking the first time she'd ever done so in her career. And that's when things took a turn for the terrifying. After getting home and regrouping, her race Pacing partner, well, pacing partner, Cassie, sent a bunch of photos from the race to like a group chat. Well, shortly thereafter, Cassie received a text about one of the moving photos, so like a live photo, which depicted a dark figure dressed in a cloak that was moving past her while she was running. This is according to the blog. Accompanying footage shows Kay jogging alongside the shady jungle trail. And then yeah, all of a sudden you get this shadow entity emerging from the foliage and walking right past her. But neither of the ladies saw any person on that strip of trail. The reason why nobody was on that part of the trail is because all runners had to run in a clockwise direction, and tourists weren't out that early. The gals didn't see anybody for hours while running together. Together. So they're like, okay, they're positive there was nobody there. Alarmed, Kay did do some digging about the area, and that's where they found the local legend claiming that the region is roamed by a lot of spirits. They're called night marchers. According to Honolulu Magazine, these rainforest creatures supposedly traveled at night to protect people, so sacred that the common man was never allowed to look at them. Breaking that rule meant death. If found in the path of one of these creatures, mortals should, well, be nude, lie face down to avoid looking at them. Folklore dictates that if you were to urinate on yourself, that also might help keep you alive. And also if you share, like, a direct descendant line with any of these specters in the procession. So Kay's lucky she didn't spot the alleged forest spirit until after the fact. After uploading the photos to social media, the cross-country competitor was swarmed by haters, who called her and Cassie a lot of mean names. Some folks even accused her of doctoring the image, and other people were like, no, it's just a crazy person on the trail. But Kay is adamant. She saw something out of the ordinary. She's like, we have the photos, and the live photo as evidence of something. She plans to return and complete the ultra marathon, by the way. Hopefully she doesn't run into anything this time. And that's it for me once again, folks. I've been Alexa, your resident Yuki Spooky Girly. See y'all next time, you lovely spooky people.